The American chestnut existed for approximately 10 million years in the eastern hardwood forest of North America, and it provided numerous benefits to wildlife species and other species in the ecosystem, and also was extremely important uh, culturally to humans for millennia. The American chestnut Castania dentata was thought to historically constitute three to four billion trees in the eastern hardwood forest of North America, and approximately one quarter to one half of the total tree density and forest where it grew. It was so abundant that other trees were actually named after it, like the chestnut oak, Quercus prinus. The historical range of the American chestnut was 200 million acres which is an area slightly larger than the state of Texas. The chestnut's range extended from Maine south to northern Mississippi and from the Piedmont west to the Ohio River Valley. The American chestnut occurred in over 40 different ecoregions and on a variety of site types. Oak, which is like a cousin to chestnut because it is in the same taxonomic family, Fagaceae, was the most common forest associate with the American chestnut. The best growth of chestnut occurred in cove forests, where water was not limiting, but American chestnut was most competitive and common on intermediate side slopes and benches. It is safe to say that no other southern Appalachian species equals chestnut in the range of sites upon which it is able to establish merchantable trees or stands. Historically and traditionally, the American chestnut was important for uh, lumber and fuel wood and uh, tanning uh, in local industries. It also was a very important uh, food source for uh, Southern Appalachian communities. The American chestnut has almost a mythic quality to uh, Southern Appalachian cultures. Many folks that have lived in the Southern Appalachians remember American chestnut being part of their family farm. Family oral traditions are passed down where they talk about chestnut being on the landscape and that they would harvest chestnuts from them. They would also um, use chestnut for fence posts and uh, lumber for their barns and siding for their houses. It's almost woven throughout their daily living experience. What's it like to work with it? It's pretty nice, I didn't even, uh... I didn't even sand this. I just I just ran it because I wanted it to be kind of rustic. So I just put a coat of uh, I got two coats of clear on it, and uh, it's it's soft. It's nice. Uh, like I said, it's it's very similar to ash mm -hmm. in the grain configuration, and, and I think probably because of the patina on the wood, it probably looks uh, similar to walnut. But it's probably not when it was original. It's probably not that dark. The patina has darkened it over the years being out in the weather. Chestnut without the worms doesn't have a, much value. Right. The wormy chestnut has a lot of value. Yep. Uh, people really, if they ever want to buy the chestnut, they're going to want the wormy chestnut. In addition to the cultural significance of chestnut, the species played a very important role ecologically. It was considered a keystone species, which basically means that without the species, the ecosystem would function very differently. The American chestnut provided a stable supply of hard mast in the fall by producing nuts that were high in protein content and fiber. Species like black bear, wild turkey, and white-tailed deer consumed chestnut and even preferred it over other hard mast species like hickory or oak. The American chestnut was probably a consistent producer of mast because it flowers later in the spring, especially compared to oak species. Flowers typically formed after late season frosts, which could damage flower and mass production. The effect that American chestnut had on insect species, like the appropriately named and now rarely seen chestnut sawfly, is relatively unknown. There is a lot we just don't understand about how American chestnut affected food webs, wildlife habitat, or other ecological processes, like roosting for bird and bat species, or soil water availability and chemistry. The first non-native disease that negatively affected chestnut was root rot caused by Phytophthora cinnamomi. It arrived in the early 1800s, probably from Southeast Asia. 
American chestnut shows little resistance to this non-native pathogen. Die-off of chestnuts and chinkapins was noted as early as the 1850s and 1860s in the Piedmont region of the southeastern United States. The disease causes roots to atrophy and leaves typically wilt and turn yellow prior to the tree's death. The chestnut was formerly abundant in the Piedmont region, down to the country between the Catawba and Yadkin rivers, but within the last 30 years they have mostly perished. They are now found east of the Blue Ridge only on higher ridges and spurs of mountains. They have suffered injury here and are dying out, both here and beyond the Blue Ridge. They are much less fruitful than they were a generation ago, and the crop is much more uncertain. Chestnut blight disease caused by a fungus, Cryphonectria parasitica, arrived in the United States in the 1890s from imported Japanese nursery stock. The disease was first reported in 1904 at the Bronx Zoo in New York. The American chestnut did not evolve with the blight, so genes for resistance to this disease did not develop. By the 1950s, chestnut blight disease had virtually eliminated the American chestnut throughout its range. A tree that had existed for 10 million years was wiped out in less than 60 years by a non-native pathogen. So you can see underneath the bark, it's kind of dead and brown, which means that it's killing the cambium layer of the tree. If I go up here and cut into the tree, you'll see a very different color because that's healthy tissue there, green and healthy, versus down here is brown and very unhealthy where the um, blight is basically exuding that oxalic acid into the tree that lowers the pH of the tree and the tree really can't handle it and will eventually the cells will start to die and eventually the tree will be girdled completely around the circumference of it and the top will then die. The chestnut blight enters the tree through wounds and natural age cracks that form on the bark. Cankers then form on the tree that often appear slightly swollen around the margins of the canker and sunken in the middle. The blight produces sexual spores that are easily spread by wind up to six miles, and asexual spores are spread more locally by rain splash. Spores are produced inside orange-colored stromata that protrude from the bark surface. The chestnut blight cannot live in the soil, so the American chestnut can survive by sprouting from old stumps. Sometimes these sprouts can live for decades, continuously dying back and re-sprouting as they are infected by the chestnut blight. Occasionally, an American chestnut will live long enough to flower and bear fruit. These trees probably have some low levels of resistance or they have a blight strain that is weak or hypovirulent. These chestnut tree survivors provide very important pollen and genetic resources for restoration efforts that are currently underway to breed for resistance. The chestnut blight is ubiquitous and it cannot be contained. It actually infects other tree species like the scarlet oak, causing a butt swell at the base of the tree. However, the blight doesn't kill these trees. So even if there are no chestnut trees around, the blight can still be in the area on these other host trees. The chestnut blight is also a saprophyte and it can live on dead logs for a number of years. Historical efforts to control blight through cutting around infected trees failed. Control through chemicals like fungicides are restricted to small groups of trees and are not practical on a large scale. The chestnut blight brought one of the most widespread ecological disasters ever known, but forests have recovered. The American chestnut was quickly replaced by other species like oak, maple, and ash to help form the forests we see today. The effect of the demise of the chestnut is not well understood. Efforts to restore this once iconic tree are underway. 